So I walk my dog down here a lot, and there's always a bunch of nasty things wrote all over the walls down there. Calling people ho, saying people are gay, just slandering people, and it's really sad. And I wanted to cover it up with something beautiful, because we have so many great events going on down there. And if you're walking your little kids down there, it's not really something you want them walking down by. So I wanted to put something on there to cover that up. And then it just kept growing and growing, and I kept buying more paint. Yeah, we have a route planned. Um, we're going to be waiting on the mayor. He said he wants to march with us. So right now we're going to be probably sending some groups around to talk to people to reiterate, to reinforce that this is a peaceful protest. This is to stand in solidarity with the victims of, of racial inequality in America that have lost their lives with the battle of racism in America. That is what we're here for. We have families, we have babies, we have kids here. So we, it's not acceptable. Violence will not take place in danger. Ain't no power like the power of the people to the power of the people won't stop. Say what? Well, it was really powerful to be honest. I didn't never seen my community come together and do anything for African Americans or anything like that. Nothing where the community comes together and say this needs to stop. We need to come together actually and make a change, do something positive. Let's get out and do something positive. Let's not. We're not pointing fingers, we're trying to get everyone into one thing and let's make some change, let's vote, let's get out and so I think it was something that we need to start doing and that's why it's starting to pop up in these small rural areas is because people are getting more and more fed up and actually seeing what's going on. Thank you. I'm sure there are some people in here who want to be violent. The non-violent people outnumber you. Okay? You will go to jail. The police are here with us. Okay? I invited them. They was happy to be here. So, that's all I have to say. We're going to line up and we're going to march. Well, the interesting thing is since I was wearing a mask and I might have had sunglasses on and a ball cap, I'm sure 90% of the people didn't know I was the mayor, just thought I was another person out there marching with them. And frankly, I like that. Uh, because that's what I was at that point. Even though I'm the mayor, I was actually, in a sense, one of the fellows out there advocating for peaceful, um, a peaceful voice, which is what was taking place. But I do think a mayor should always support, um, again, the peaceful assembly uh, of the constituents there, and I'll just say of friends there. I would say that crowd was maybe as many as 500 people were participating. Think about it, over 500 people participated in an event that was entirely peaceful. And again, I, I give credit to the meeting organizers and I want to encourage that kind of meeting. Best way of encouraging is participating. Officers 
People are just so cruel. And I just don't understand how people can be so mean. I feel like this is just something little I can do to put out something positive that's bright and colorful, that can make people feel good and feel happy. Some people obviously are upset because they cover it up, spray painting out black. I just don't understand how people are so racist. It's sad. It's important because right now, black lives matter. People are dying all over. And if they were white, it wouldn't be happening, especially with the police. And not all police are bad. Like the Zanesville police are great. I think they come down here and they help people protest and they do a good job and they're trying their best. But there are a lot of bad cops out there not doing good things and they need to be called out. If it was my kid or my friend who'd gotten killed, then I would definitely, I would want my voice to be heard. The next step is going to be, um, it's, it's a Juneteenth celebration, you know, um, that's, that's our Freedom Day. So uh, we're going to, we're going to celebrate that. And the main thing that we are focusing on, the only thing that we are focusing on that day is um, voters registration. And um, just letting people know, you want to see a change, you got to do your part. You, and in order to do your part, you know, there's a little step you got to take. You have to register to vote before you can go vote. So we need, we need them to come out and vote. Register to vote so you can go vote. What'd you say, ma'am? What was that? You think, I think I can do what? Say that again. You can do whatever because you I can do whatever because I'm what? Ma'am, we have a permit to use this park and you are not permitted to park in here. And it's not because I'm black, ma'am. So I'm gonna have to ask you very nicely to remove your car or the police can do it for you. Would you like to state that again? Oh, okay. What'd you say before that? No, that's not what you said. You said some racial stuff. What'd you say? I didn't say no racial shit. You wish I would. Get the fuck away. Hello. What'd you say? I need the police to zing you in the park. All right, stay on the line. I'll hook you up with them. Don't hang up. One, where's your emergency? I got the police at Zane Landing Park. What's going on? I got on the bitch down there harassing me. And you know what? I'm telling you, stupid crazy. Okay. Just because they got all this bullshit, black lives matter shit going on, they can make them fucking push me around and threaten me because I Okay, Hope. Hope. Are you still there? Yes. Okay. What what exactly is going on? I couldn't understand. Oh, bitch pulls up me and tells me they're having an event here and I can't be here and I need to leave. And I tell her, are you going to leave when the fucking cops tell me to leave? Because I don't see no goddamn sign saying the park is closed. And then she wants to accuse me of making a racial slur. That's a lot that I got my fucking name. Because I'm nice, sir. Okay, I... <laughs>
keep on a talking, Lord, walking to freedom land. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a marching, Lord, keep on a talking, Lord, walking to freedom land. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I guess I was just sitting here going through documentaries and different types of things because there are a bunch of free documentaries on Amazon Prime during when that first happened because they were trying to educate people and I pretty much watched every documentary that was on there and it just kind of made me thinking like this isn't a struggle that's been going on for just this just George Floyd being killed it goes back to Countless, countless. We don't even can't even name all their names, and it's been going on before that with Rodney King, and then before that with the Black Panthers and Martin Luther King, Mark, Malcolm X. Has been going on for generations and generations, and we're still every generation's still pressing forward, trying to get up another step or another boundary that we have to get over. And I, that's what it pretty much was. Like, the colorless hands are the rep representation of everyone that's ever done anything to help the movement. And uh, the bridge is kind of like us moving forward across something that's was put there to be oppressive. I mean, Edmund Pettus was the grand dragon of the Ku Klux Klan. And... The police cars, the hands up logo in front of it. So I guess that's pretty much what I was getting at. Everything is moving towards the American flag at the top. Oh, we shall overcome. We shall overcome. Said we shall overcome. So. Because, you know, all lives do matter. Let's not, let's not uh, get confused on that. But if black lives don't matter, then all lives can't matter. So, you know, until black lives matter, all lives don't matter. So, yeah. Key Roy was not very nice for doing that. Yeah. Hopefully whoever created this can come on back and fix it. You'd have to understand the gravity of this situation, of this moment that our country is in. You'd have to understand the, the history behind police brutality.
you have to understand that it does affect everyone. Police brutality affects the latter population, poor white folks, and it affects black people in this country. So when we said black lives matter, why aren't you mad? When we said black lives matter, we didn't say only black lives matter, we meant black lives matter too. And that, that's the point of that message. It's not trying to convey anything of in superiority towards any races or uh, an endorsement of a group of people. It is, it is just a message. It's a, a statement that is trying to acknowledge the disproportionate uh, killings of black unarmed men in this country from our police, our law enforcement. That's what Black Lives Matter means. And if you cannot get behind that, I seen a statement the other day, a, a meme on um, social media, and it said, Black Lives Matter. It said, for those who respond with All Lives Matter, it's equivalent to when the Constitution said, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Yet they had slavery institutionalized in its system. When I first saw the mural, I thought back on this bridge, the significance behind this bridge. I-70 is literally a wall across Zanesville that separates, that separates the south end from the north end. It separates economic advantages to, to poverty. When I go back as a kid, I can remember when they first put the interstate in. I don't know, maybe some people did have this concept of splitting the city in half, but whether they did it on purpose, as they say, by accident or design, the net impact was it created at least two separate cities. Because before that, you at least had maybe separation by the Muskingum River or separation by the Licking. So part of what we have to do is overcome our geographic, uh, both man-made and real barriers so that we can create this dialogue. As we're looking at siting facilities and, and making investment opportunities, we have to bear in mind this is one big city. You know, for example, in the healthcare industry, most of the healthcare industry is in the North End. Spreading things like that out, spreading shopping opportunities out, spreading recreational opportunities out, are a way of giving value to all ends of our town. No one builds down here on the South Side. You got a Goodwill down here that just got built. Like, that's pretty much the epitome of what this side is. They put a big Goodwill down here. So I think that really shows what, what goes into this side is we get a big goodwill and the other side gets every food chain that ever tries to do anything. There's a lot of things that I just think this movement, if it gets done right, it will change the entire country. Like it, I can't say what I think can, should happen because I don't know laws and all that very well. I'm not literate in laws, but I know, do know that if we can get one people out of oppression and get them starting thriving that are on the bottom percentile, then the money will start flowing up and we can start progressing, doing better. Think about all the engineers and artists and scientists and that have been lost to prison or gang, gang violence or police anything there's a lot of a lot of points that need to be done not even with the police even in black communities there's lots of problems that need to be taken care of there homeless after. Can I get a quarter for a spray paint, please? I was just going to a place that was on my way home because I was in Duncan Falls taking care of my friend's dad who has dementia. So on the way home from there, the place, it's like four something for each can of paint. Like four fifty nine. Then I bought that ladder today because I was like, nothing's gonna stop me. I'm gonna be so tall this time and I can probably use it at home too. But the main purpose was for this. Yeah, at Walmart, you can get it for like three something. Walmart was like too far away. I was riled up. I was like, I gotta cover this and I gotta do this. 
And I got paid on Friday, so I thought I was rich. But I'm not. Starving artist. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I'm very fortunate. I'm also reading a book called uh, The Declaration, and it provides um, a context that we cannot view the Declaration of Independence and many of the other founding documents of this nation as a moment of time. We cannot view them as just papers that represented something that existed long ago. We must claim these papers. We must claim the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution as our own and embrace the messages that they conveyed now. We need to make sure we uh, fully understand the impact of those words of all men being created equal, of us having unalienable rights and us having the right to reform and revolt the government if it doesn't uphold the truth that it's promised. It, it provides a belonging to this country, honestly. It, it makes me feel more close to the country. Then I was like, oh yeah, I can do all kinds of different hands and they're all reaching. Because we're reaching for a goal of things to be equal or people to be heard or people to not get killed for their skin color. Like, that's crazy that that's still a fight. So the hands reaching was what I really liked. And then there's hearts all around. So with hearts then, it's more symbolic of love too. And you know someone's going to go down there and be mad again. <laughs> That's okay. Then I'll think of the next thing to do, and it will be better. I'll just keep getting better. I'm trying to stay away from the whole semantics of all lives matter, black lives matter, you know, blue lives matter, because it seems like when you go down one path, you end up getting into arguments with people. What I really want to focus on is we've got to find ways of understanding each other, respecting each other, helping each other. And again, everybody matters in that sense. And I totally agree that until everybody has an equal opportunity, real and perceived in America, we're always going to have this friction. And so the sooner we get on the job of understanding and working with, understanding the issues and working with each other, the sooner we can do that, the better we are going to be earlier. Um, we've made progress over, you know, 150 years, 200 years. Uh, there's more progress to be made. I mean, I think back in the 1960s when Lyndon Baines Johnson launched the Great Society. Uh, that era of American society hasn't been studied enough. I mean, between civil rights camp, uh, reform and just the economic relief that LBJ uh, pushed through in terms of legislation, he had to work with the opposite party, Republican and Democrat. I really think if we could study that portion of American history, uh, it would help us understand maybe how to get through this portion of American history. like I feel like a lot of people would have a better understanding if the truth was told you know the truth is not told the truth is not taught in schools 
you know? Me personally, don't teach my son about Martin Luther King and I have a dream. That's easy. You know, don't teach my son about, you know, uh, Malcolm X and that's easy. We, I'll, I'll teach him that. Teach him the real stuff. Let my son know what his ancestors went through. Let these kids know that sitting beside him, let him, let them know, you know, exactly what it was like, you know, growing up back then, if your skin was the color that my son's skin is, you know what I mean? Teach them that, you know? And if, if it makes you uncomfortable, dig deeper, you know? That's the part you need to dig deeper into. If that makes you uncomfortable, dig deeper into that part because if it makes you uncomfortable my question is why why are you uncomfortable about talking about this renisha mcbride auto accident knocked on the door for help homeowner was found guilty of second degree murder tamia rice played with a toy gun shot by police officer arriving on scene officer was not charged sean bell hosting a bachelor party 50 rounds fired by police officers who were found not guilty of all charges. Walter Scott, pulled over for a brake light, shot in the back by a police officer who pled guilty to civil rights violations. Philando Castro, pulled over in a car, told officer he had a legally registered weapon in car. Officer acquitted of all charges. Anaya Jones, sleeping, accidentally shot by an officer in a raid on the wrong apartment. Officer cleared of all charges. Freddie Gray, beaten to death by officers while being transported in a police van. All officers involved were acquitted. John Crawford, stopping at Walmart, holding a BB gun that was on sale. Let us march on till 